Business News. Seven sheriff's deputies indicted on charges they hid an inmate turned confidential informant from the FBI and then threatened the informant's FBI handlers. But who ordered the operation and who could be indicted next? I'm basically out of the out of the loop. Uh, Mr. Tanaka is fully in the loop. In fact, more in the loop than even me. Good evening, I'm Mark Brown. I'm Michelle Tuzzi. Rumors are swirling that more indictments could come down at any time. So how far up the chain of command could those indictments go? Sheriff Lee Baca says his sudden retirement has nothing to do with the FBI investigation into his department. The question is who knew what and when? Our David Ono was here with his investigation to try to connect some of the dots. David. Mark, Michelle, sources within the L.A. County Sheriff's Department tell Eyewitness News that Sheriff Baca and his former second-in-command, Paul Tanaka, were both involved in the operation to hide the FBI informant. That informant was asked by the FBI to report on possible abuse and corruption within the jails. Well, tonight, our investigation takes a closer look at the scheme that became known as Operation Pandora's Box. It all began in the summer of 2011 here at the Men's Central Jail when inmate turned FBI informant Anthony Brown, a convicted armed robber, was caught with a contraband cell phone smuggled in by a sheriff's deputy. Investigators quickly realized that Brown was using that phone to call the FBI. What happened next is what led to seven of those indictments by U.S. Attorney Andre Barat. They took affirmative steps to hide the information, informant from everyone, including the FBI. Brown was moved, allegedly hidden, for 18 days. His name was changed, records were altered and destroyed. These allegations are breathtaking in their brazenness. Peter Eliasberg is with the ACLU, a court-appointed monitor of the L.A. County Jails. It's hard for me to imagine that such a scheme took place without knowledge and authorization of the highest levels of the department. So you're saying that whatever happened transpired without the knowledge of the sheriff of Los Angeles County? I'm not saying that. U.S. Attorney Andre Barat's comments last month clearly left open the possibility of more indictments. So what did they know and when did they know it? In previous interviews, we found some clues. I got a phone call from the sheriff on my cell phone and he was very upset. Former Under Sheriff Paul Tadaka sat down with me in May of last year for a lengthy interview and detailed what he says the sheriff did right after the phone was discovered. He said, I want you to make sure that thing is locked up and that thing is not going anywhere, period. And I want that inmate interviewed, and I don't want him to go anywhere. And then he convened, the sheriff personally convened a meeting for Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, and there were about 12 to 15 of us in the room, and where he gave orders as, exactly as to how he wanted the investigation to be done. What unfolded over the next seven weeks will be crucial to determining who else could be indicted. Sheriff Baca's calendars indicate that on Friday, August 19th, Sheriff Baca and then under Sheriff Tanaka both met with Internal Criminal Investigations Bureau Captain Tom Carey and Lieutenant Greg Thompson. Thompson is one of the seven indicted in the Anthony Brown case. Over the next six weeks, according to the indictment, inmate Anthony Brown was hidden. His name was changed, witnesses were intimidated, records were falsified, and Brown's two FBI handlers were surveilled. One of those FBI handlers was allegedly confronted outside her home by two of those indicted, Sergeants Scott Craig and Marcella Long, and threatened with arrest. The sergeants falsely threatened the special agent with arrest. According to the indictment, that confrontation outside the FBI agent's home took place on September 26th, the very next day, September 27th, Sheriff Baca met with U.S. Attorney Andre Barat and the FBI. Eyewitness News caught up with Sheriff Baca on that day. After the meeting, and even then, more than seven weeks after the phone was found, Sheriff Baca continued to maintain that the FBI was acting illegally. The phone is the FBI's phone. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and the FBI is not denying it. And the fact that the phone came in uh, is against the law. And even in the days after Baca's meeting with the feds, surveillance of the FBI agents continued, according to the indictment. Sources directly involved with the Anthony Brown operation tell Eyewitness News that they had a special meeting here at Heroes Park, just outside of the Men's Central Jail. Among those in the meeting are three deputies who were indicted, Lieutenant Greg Thompson and Deputies Gerard Smith and Mickey Manzo. 
In this meeting, Thompson told the group that he had just come from a meeting with Sheriff Lee Baca and Under Sheriff Paul Tanaka, and he clarified with this group that their mission was to keep Brown hidden from the feds. I asked Tanaka in that May 2013 interview if he witnessed anything on Sheriff Baca's part that could have been inappropriate or illegal. I didn't view it as illegal at the time. What I viewed it as is he wanted to get to the bottom of what was going on. Tanaka told me he was, quote, out of the loop on the Brown operation. So at that point, I'm basically out of the, out of the loop because now he's communicating directly to the uh, captain and the lieutenant of the Interminal, Internal Criminal Investigations Bureau. Tanaka said he was out of the loop once that phone was found after that meeting. Is, is that true? Absolutely not. Uh, Mr. Tanaka is fully in the loop, in fact, more in the loop than even me. Rumors are rampant in the department that more indictments could come down at any time. I'm not afraid of reality. I'm only afraid of people that don't tell the truth. Well, Eyewitness News has also learned that the confrontation between those two sergeants and the FBI agent was recorded in both audio and video, and that's sure to be a crucial bit of evidence. Lieutenants Greg Thompson, Steve Levins, Sergeant Scott Craig, and Mar uh, Maricela Long, and Deputies Gerard Smith, Mickey Manzo, and James Sexton have all pleaded not guilty. Trial is scheduled for May 13th. Mark Michelle, back to you. David Ono, thank you.